Maintaining healthy arteries is actually crucial for overall well-being and longevity. And one of the most common issues that can actually affect arterial health is the buildup of plaque, which can lead to serious cardiovascular problems. So in this video, we'll discuss the three main components of plaque, the different types of plaque, and the best nutrients to help remove plaque from the arteries. So plaque is formed by a combination of cholesterol, a specific type of protein, and of course, calcium. Now, these three ingredients work together to create a band-aid when there is inflammation or damage inside the artery. And it's very important to understand that there are two types of plaque. You have soft plaque and hard calcified plaque. Soft plaque is more common, accounting for about 80% of all arterial plaque. And this type of plaque is unstable and very dangerous as it can easily rupture and cause a blood clot, leading to a heart attack or stroke. On the other hand, hard plaque is actually more stable and less dangerous, but it can still narrow the arteries and restrict blood flow. That said, continue watching to the end as I will share specific blood testing to figure out if you have potential inflammation for soft plaque. When you get a CT calcium test, you receive a score that represents the amount of calcified plaque in your arteries. However, this test does not detect soft plaque, which is why it's essential to be aware of the CAC paradox. See, sometimes, after making positive lifestyle changes and improving your diet, your CAC score might increase. This doesn't necessarily mean your arterial health is actually worsening. Instead, it could indicate that soft plaque is being converted into more stable calcified plaque. Glycation, a process in which sugar and protein molecules become stuck together, as I often speak of this term during my live session, is often connected to soft plaque formation. This can actually lead to inflammation and other problems in the body. And soft plaque is also associated with oxidization, particularly of the small dense LDL particles, which are more harmful than the large buoyant LDL particles. To identify the presence of soft plaque, there are two biomarkers you can look for in a blood test, myeloperoxidase, short for MPO, and LPPLA2. Another highly effective and non-invasive test is a carotid uh, ultrasound, which can actually predict the presence of soft plaque with 98% accuracy. So in addition to these tests, there are other important values to consider when you're assessing your risk for arterial plaque. One, higher levels of HDL can actually help clean the harmful small dense LDL particles. Two, high triglyceride levels often indicate that a person is consuming too many simple carbohydrates. Three, lipoprotein insulin resistance. This test is highly associated with cardiovascular atherosclerosis and can provide valuable insights into your lipid health. To determine if you have small, dense LDL particles without a specific test, you can always divide your LDL value by your ApoB value. If the result is greater than 1.2, it indicates the presence of large, buoyant LDL particles, which are less harmful. And it's a great idea to also get your ApoA1 levels checked and make sure the ratio is below 0.56 against ApoB. Now, let's discuss the nutrients that can help remove plaque from your arteries. Now, I know for a fact there are numerous influencers on YouTube talk about pycnogenol, vitamin K2, neurokinase, and others, but here is my recommendation and based on testing. See, minimum requirement of 2,000 milligrams of polyphenols daily, this could be from pomegranate 90% or higher extracted, e.g. CG, berries and coffee in addition to that you could include vitamin k2 and k7 of 10,000 micrograms or higher and neurokinase of 2000 pregnolytic units or higher and should be cycled every 45 days with five days off now in addition to this stack i always like to add magnesium and niacin 
And if you have a gene type with high levels of lipoprotein small a, then add a nitrate supplement. Now for some of you who is not familiar with some of the items I mentioned, here is a quick brief explanation. Polyphenols prevents oxidation of ApoB lipids and can help convert soft plaque into calcified plaque, making it more stable. Vitamin K2 helps regulate calcium in the body and it does stop calcification in the arteries. Neurokinase decreases the thickness of the carotid artery walls and niacin even thought it causes a slight flush effect. Niacin is much stronger and actually more powerful than your average statins in managing cholesterol and of course preventing oxidization. Now as for magnesium ionic chloride, it does help in healing soft plaque alongside with polyphenols and nitrate supplement vasodilates the arteries, therefore it prevents strokes and heart attacks.